Ready Check Radio. Tell you what, that music always puts me in a good mood because every time I hear it, it's Thursday, it's 7 p.m. Eastern. I've finished my part time, just turned return from furlough work week. And it's time to do some games and talk games with some friends of mine. Welcome, everybody. I'm Mike Byrne, host of the Relic Grind, our Final Fantasy 14 Square Enix podcast here on Ready Check Radio. Welcome to our lovely live chat, who will be part of the show with their opinions as we go. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify, head on over to readycheckradio.com. That's R-A-I-D-E-O. See, like the play on MMO raids. Get it? It's very clever. Check it out. Uh, come and do so all smart. the follows, all the socials, and join us for a live show if you get a chance. We've got a lot to talk about, so we kind of got to get right down to it. But first, I've got to introduce the gentlemen themselves, uh, Mr. Chris Montoya, a.k.a. Targoth. How are you, sir? Greetings, programs. I am a little overwhelmed. It's been a very busy day and can't wait to get into all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it, it wasn't... Yesterday was very busy on MMO Bomb because Gamigo closed down a bunch of shit. Uh, yeah. And then today was, you know, fairly steady news day, not, not a lot going on. And then all of a sudden, as far as the relic grind goes... We walked right into the Sony PlayStation State of Play presentation and thought maybe, maybe, maybe Monto, uh, Chris will we'll walk away with one or two, you know, little Nuggets, tidbits yeah. we could bring to the Relic yeah. Grind. We had the show notes done. Maybe we'll just add one or two little, oh, by the way, you know, Saga Frontier announcement. And then, oh my, mm. oh, I've got your shot in the wrong spot. There we go. <laughs> He's so angry he threw his shot out of alignment. <laughs> Man, Mr. I'm in a great mood, Mr. Great Adam mood. Lane, aka Kronos. Uh, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, this is like a normal day for me. It's okay. <laughs> I'm used to it by now. We've, I mean, we've got we've got 14 stuff to talk about. Obviously, you know, a little bit of a dead period for 14 as we head into the uh, the the waning months uh, leading into the expansion. We really only have one more big patch coming, uh, and even then. It's only big for a select portion of the player base, given what's inside it and everything. But we do manage yeah. to have some 14 news on that front because Yoshi P, this is also his interview season. You know, right after he does the big announcement showcase prior to the Digital Fan Fest. But gentlemen, I, I honestly think we would be remiss if we started with Final Fantasy 14 stuff today. I, I think I propose that we jump a little ahead in the show notes and we cover perhaps, I don't know, picking something at random here. Um, random, sure. <laughs> the second, let's go with the second to last thing in the show notes. Let's jump ahead and we'll cover the second to last thing in the show notes. Uh, what does that happen to be? Oh, 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 oh yeah, oh, yeah you, that's a good place to start. We can just happen. We can make that work. We can make that work. There's, there's some stuff. There. Sony had the old state of play just a few hours ago, and uh, we're gonna review that whole presentation, uh, not like bit by bit, but like our feelings on the presentation on gaming gumbo. So I'll just uh, leave you with: I thought the entire presentation didn't need to happen uh, after it was over. Uh, there really wasn't. You know, anything too stellar to, to really come out about. But for the purposes of this show, the Relic Grind being Square Enix related, there was quite a bit of news jammed into the last few minutes. Some of it wasn't even in the state of play. It just came out on Twitter afterwards. I do have the official press release uh, for it as well. So I will read the my, my co-host's a little bit from that. But let's just kind of take it from the top here on uh, what what we got. So first off, we've got the announcement for Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, a new version of the first episode of the Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out in June. And it's got a slew of upgraded features, particularly when you're talking about the PlayStation 5 and running in native 4K resolution and new textures and new graphic updates. I mean, to be honest, the graphics looked 
pretty similar. Uh, you know, we were dealing with end of the era PlayStation 4 graphics and beginning of the era PlayStation 5 graphics. To be honest, there's not too much of a difference there. Besides, obviously, frame rate and running in native 4K resolution. We saw the camera mode uh, being teased in there. A graphics mode for the 4K, a performance mode if you want to prioritize 60 frames per second. A new classic mode as far as the difficulty settings go, give you new ways to play, and obviously faster load times. Very, very focused on a June launch, uh, Sarkoth, for PlayStation 5, uh, this particular model. Now, if you have the PlayStation 4 version, you will be able to upgrade, get the what they call the PS5 upgrade uh, for free as well. But that does that is different from the Intergrade version of the game because the Intergrade version of the game also includes some brand new Yuffie-based DLC. If you have the game now and you upgrade to the PS5 version with that additional stuff in June, you could buy the Yuffie DLC separately by itself. So that is still an option for those of us like myself that have it for the PS4 will upgrade to the PS5. And if I want the DLC, I don't have to go and buy the integrated uh, integrate version that has all the extra bells and whistles. But that comes with a little bit of a downside in that this is specifically PlayStation 5. Specifically yes. PlayStation 5, including that extra bit of DLC. So let's stop there with just that being, because that was the primary announcement during the state of play. Let's get some initial takes on it. Let's start with with uh, with you, Kronos, because I know you're just chomping at the bit for this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big 7 fan. It's probably like one of my favorite games ever. Uh, and I, <laughs> I just, I don't know. The news didn't really excite me that much. Um, I, I kind of knew since it was state of play and that they were going to put it in there. They wouldn't really talk about a Steam version, which is kind of more what I would want anyways, but that that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm fine, like, upgrading all the graphics and stuff. That's kind of, I mean, to be expected, really. Um, which and, and it looks a little better, which is fine, and the free upgrade is nice. The DLC, though, really bothers me. I think that's kind of dumb to really just lock it into PlayStation 5. I'm hoping that maybe when they do announce that the Steam version maybe comes out the same day, that they'll get it too, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Especially um, considering that we won't see this until June 10th. And unless right. news breaks in the next month and week and a half, Sony loses its exclusivity deal on April 10th. It was originally in March. It was pushed back to April 10th when the game was was delayed. Um, yeah. So the exclusivity deal will be up unless there's negotiations taking place that we just don't know about yet. The exclusivity deal will be up by the time this DLC and this integrated version launches. Right. Yeah. Which is why I, th I think they might announce that at some point, maybe after that expires, that they're going to release this version on Steam too. The DLC, though, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if that's going to maybe that. Well, falls if they under, release like, the integrated version, then it will have the It'll DLC in it. it. The, that DLC yeah. is yeah. packaged in the integrated version. Be uh, all in I one. mean, that's that's true. Maybe Steam just gets like an upgrade. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what they're going to do. Um, other than that, just the DLC. I mean, yeah, Yuffie looks cool. I, I, who asked for this? I don't I don't know. I, like, I, it's like a, it looks like they're trying I to did. connect like. Um, <laughs> It looks like they're I, trying to connect like Dirge to Cerberus. I, I, like, Tarkov there's a lot of Dirge it, Cerberus stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of Dirge of Cerberus stuff is in there. Like they're trying to connect that and then they're bringing in this new character who's probably just going to die because he doesn't exist anywhere else. Yeah, Sonon or Sonon. Um, I mean, Yuffie's cool. I, I like Yuffie. I just. I, couldn't this have just like been in part two or something? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it feels really, like the LCD I didn't need. Yeah, one of That's the all. things Jason Winter said, Tark, and I want your opinion on this because I know you're a fan of Yuffie. Yeah. You like the general idea of the DLC. We'll get to the PS5 specifics because I know you you kind of don't really agree with that one. You and I are kind of on the same page there. Um, we understand that at a at certain point you, you've got to escape the PlayStation 4 being a limitation. We just kind of think maybe with the PlayStation 5 not being available, that now is not the time to actually do that escaping. And you are giving yeah, the upgrade rough. for free. 
So, you know, hey, whatever, just buy the DLC. Well, yeah, but if you can't get a PlayStation 5 between now and June, then you're just asked out on the DLC until you can get a PlayStation 5. If this was a year and a half from now, I probably wouldn't have the problem with it that I have right now. I think it's a dumb time to lock your core fans in. Uh, but let's get your take on just the DLC itself first and, and your initial impressions, uh, Chris, because I know you are looking forward to this content, even if I'm just me. I'm lukewarm on it and Kronos is ready to set it on fire. So we've got a nice spread <laughs> of opinions on this one. I am all about extra content. So uh, delving a little bit into what is happening elsewhere in Midgard during uh, after Cloud Falls. Um, seeing what happens on the other side in Sector 7 and, and getting Yuffie in. So she's not just a, hey, by the way, I stole all your material and run away. And people are like, what the hell? This gives uh, people an introduction to her that may not know about her. Uh, I, and again, more content, I, I'll take it. Uh, and one thing that I thought was pretty cool that I, that I was seeing, uh, character combos. So Son and interacting with Yuffie. So maybe that's something that they're going to, you know, they're showing us and they're going to, put in part two so that's awesome too does it worry you though because like like let's look at this from a business <clears throat> slash consumer perspective right i've got to spend let's say 60 let's say 70 because i'm not going to buy the base versions right you know that doesn't mm. that just doesn't happen that just you know doesn't happen uh buying base versions of things uh in this house particularly when they come from square enix yeah. so let's say i spend 60 to 70 bucks on you know, this guy here, I, f I think this was like, eight, let's say 80, the deluxe edition. Um, yeah, I believe so. Still look, yeah. Yeah, and the, the other one, the one with the figure and everything was 300 or, or 275 mm -hmm. or something like that. Anyway, let's say 70, 80 bucks on part one. And we don't know how many parts this is going to be, so let's give them three. 80, 80, 80. I think that's reasonable. Most of us think it's not going to be wrapped up in two, but making it four would be pulling some threads very, very thin. So let's give it three. And then in the interim, we're going to release DLC about characters that don't happen to be part of the main storyline for part one. Let's put a, a Yuffie DLC in there. And you know what? Before part two comes out, let's put a Vincent one in there so we can get some backstory oh, about Vincent. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's put... Okay, now they're in part two. Let's go to who's going to be in part three that we haven't seen yet. Let's get some DLC. Are you worried about that potentially and again we don't know that that's their plan we don't know that but with this Yuffie DLC exactly as you said you like what it's doing filling in some backstory giving this character a little more a little more fleshed out context before all of a sudden they just appear yeah Kate Sith DLC like are you worried that that could potentially be the plan because to me I feel like now I I'm already getting nickeled and dimed by breaking one of my favorite games up into three parts. Now, you did really well with this part to the point that I'm going to buy the next one, no questions asked, and feel good about doing it. But when you start nickel and diming that fanhood, that nostalgia, I don't know. That kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. When you put it that way, yeah. And again, I, I don't know that that's what from. they're doing. It's just the impression I get with the Yuffie DLC. Yeah, I, they're, they're doing it now. What's to say they don't just continue this model and rip all our money from us for one game and DLCs and extra. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. But I like more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's basically what I was saying, too. It's like, I, I think it looks great. And, and it's like a chapter and it looks cool and like you said it could be like them adding the the battle mechanics in that we might see in the next installment i, I could totally see that but like what, what mike's saying like i love mm -hmm. this game and yeah. it, and, it, and i feel like i'm being nickel and dime like this could just be what like you could just start part two with this or something like a small yuffie chapter no one's gonna be mad about that i, I don't know i just and then it just feels like they're trying to do it to like maybe sell PS5s early and then get people hyped to, I don't know, I just, I have a lot of problems. I, I don't like DLC models in general. I, I just want mm, the game. Yeah. I want to play the yeah. game. I, I, and I'm and, with and you. I, I'm generally not a fan of DLC, but if DLC is done right, I don't mind yeah. shelling out, you know, the extra True. bucks to support the developer and get a cool piece of content. I, Chris, I'm right in line with you on that. I spent 60 bucks on this game. Two years later, they 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 dropped some DLC 
They're asking me for twelve mm-hmm. ninety nine for two and a half, three hours of more content with characters I love. Great. That's not the model that's happening here, though. We still have yeah, at least one, two, or three more episodes of this freaking game. And then now there's also DLC and the game. And it might be great. And it might financially be worth it to all fans who just like, you know what? They went above and beyond. It's all new story. I don't mind shelling out the X. Ex- it may turn out wonderfully. But that's just not the impression, the feeling I get right now of, well, shit, how many of these am I going to have before I get episode two and then have to spend money on that? Um, it, it, I don't know. It feels a little iffy on that front, I think is the best way to describe it for me. Just a little iffy. Yeah, because by, by the end of it, if we, we total it all up and it gets to like $400 for one complete story, complete game, yeah, that's going to feel real bad. Yeah, what's funny is non-Final Fantasy VII fans or fanboys, uh, Kronos, were making fun of us fanboys being willing to buy three of these. And now, <laughs> and we defended it. We were like, you know what, as long as they do this, this, and this, you know, great, it, whatever. And then we got this, and it's like, well, shit. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we were the suckers. <laughs> I, I'm always the sucker in this scenario. It's fine. <laughs> I like. I, I'm. I'm. I'm self aware that I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. And like, the thing is, what's crazy is I don't think this is gonna sell a PS5 for me just yet. Like, I don't think I'm gonna rush to get a PS5 by June. I'm probably still gonna wait till 16 comes out, and then when I buy it, then I'll probably get this at that point. Um. Like that, that's just kind of, kind of where my level of hype is for this DLC because I feel like it's going to be really short too. Oh, probably. Know. Like, um, like a maybe. chapter's worth, maybe something like that. Like in, inside I'd the say game, three to five chapters, maybe. You think it's going to be? I'd that be surprised long? if it's that big. I'd be surprised if it's. That I'd big. be stunned if it was that long. If it's that long, uh, Tarkov, then maybe I don't have as much of a problem with it. Because yeah. that would be a fairly sizable chunk of content if we were looking at like a five chapter uh, DLC. I think that's highly unlikely, but it, if it was, yeah, like, I'm I'll hoping re- it's at least three. I'm to- perfectly willing to revisit and call myself wrong if I am. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's that deep, but I just, even if it gets that deep, I don't know if like, it's a side story. I no, don't know. Are you going to want to do it for Vincent? Are you going to want to do it for Kate Sith? Are you going to want to do it for you know all these different side oh, characters, right. you know, that then, you know, and Jason Winter said this, uh, so credit where due, he was like, then it doesn't even have to be characters that aren't in the story yet that you're giving context to. It's characters that leave the story for a little bit. We saw this with Final Fantasy 15, right? And it's DLC. Mm-hmm. Let's go follow a character in the DLC while they were out of the party and explain what happened there. Uh, well, isn't that what this is too, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What, like, yeah. 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 Like I was saying, yeah. The while clouds down in the church, you know, this is happening uh, over in Sector Seven area, which it seems to be. So. Yeah, and it's also gonna like I would bet money it's gonna take place in the lab underneath because that's where all the DGS stuff comes from, which is all linked to Dirge of Cerberus, which is why Yuffie's there in the first place and why you see Weiss at the end, which the whole other thing, but. <laughs> I'm just excited. I, mean, I for feel the I feel really game. bad for Adam. Adam looks like yeah. he's having the most stressful day ever. <laughs> Dude, I tried but my you know what? and everything. DLC, to to we be need fair, the DLC, give us the Rufus DLC. <laughs> to be fair, no your life stuff. your life is pretty good if this is the most stressful thing that's going on for you today, right? I mean, yeah, I, we're, true. we're sitting around talking about video games. How hard can life be? Let's put it in perspective. Uh, but yeah, I still don't like being nickeled and dime because I've been a diligent, good fanboy either. Now I will say this too. There is a rumor. This is 100% rumor that final fantasy seven will, uh, remake will be one of the free games next month for PSN subscribers. Um, and while you might go, wow, that's pretty new to be on there. They've done new titles on there. Hell, Fall Guys, the the month it came, and I know that's much smaller, but the month it came out, it was free. Another example, Control, right? That just came out in September, and that was this month for whatever, the Ultimate Bundle, the Come to Jesus Bundle, the Big Dick Bundle. I don't know what the hell it was called. Uh, Ultimate Edition. Yeah, great game, great game. I platinumed that game. It's so good. Uh, At least I, I thought so. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because if the exclusivity ends April 10th, 
and you give it away for free in March, the incentive to buy that thing on other platforms just went dramatically down. (laughs) Particularly if you also say, hey, by the way, we're going to give you the game for free on PSN. And when you do get a PS5, you can upgrade to that for free, having gotten this game for free. Now maybe spending ten twenty dollars on UV DLC doesn't feel all that bad. Uh, so I, I think I saw it was like just room thirty dollar difference or something. Because yeah. I think they showed the price for like if you buy it with the DLC included, I think it's like thirty dollar difference. So it's probably gonna be like a thirty dollar DLC. I think so. I think I saw. I think I saw that. Just rumor. If, it, if it's thirty dollars, it better be freaking five chapters. <laughs> just rumor, but you know, they've been right on those before. Uh, so maybe keep an eye. You know, if you're planning on getting your PSN or or, or buying Final Fantasy VII Remake, maybe wait uh, a week and a half and, and see if it's free. Uh, and then you could just sub up to your PSN for a year and get a bunch of other games along the way. Now, Final Fantasy did have other announcements, but they did not do them during State of Play. They did them independently on their Twitter account. Uh, and one of them were, or both of them were things we've referenced on this show before. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were right about platform. Um, we were wrong about content in both. <laughs> yeah. In both. Um, so we talked about First Soldier and Ever Crisis when we saw the trademarks get filed by Square Enix. They are both, in fact, mobile games. So we were right on that front, gentlemen. Wait, whoop, that's the wrong slide. Where are you guys? Oh, my God, I can't <laughs> find you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, you're gone. What is going on? No, seriously, the <laughs> Discord, like, you're, you're still there, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on in Street Labs. <laughs> There's me. Pause There's for social identification. <laughs> Seriously, where'd you guys go? Whoops. I don't understand what's going on. Should I try disconnecting and reconnecting? No, no. We're, we're okay. still live. You're still on Discord here. Hey. The cameras are still set up. Everybody can hear you, I assume, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, darkness. These guys are (laughs) my co-hosts are DLC now. I I thought initially I hit the wrong button. Tweets. This is what these tweets have done to us. Okay. No, seriously though, where the hell are you? Deep dark hole of despair. Like, what is going on? (laughs) You can hear the chat. You can hear them, right? (laughs) You can absolutely hear them. (laughs) I don't. I literally don't know what's going on. Good times. Yeah, you can hear them. That, I mean, your All right, let's keep your going, shots then. are there. Let's see what's going on here. Discord. Yeah. Anyway, while you're fixing that, we'll, we'll just keep talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I we'll mean, we're gonna have it. to. We're gonna have to, right? All right. So uh, while I try to fix that. So yeah, we've got both of those that we saw. We know the uh, their mobile games. We suspected as much, but let's start with First Soldier. Uh, for we'll go to you, Kronos, because this one, I, I don't think we saw coming exactly what this is going to be. Yeah, I wish you could see my face right now. I wish we could too. <laughs> I wish we could yeah. too. Yeah, this I thought it was a joke. Like, I don't know. I just I feel like they just throw these ideas out in a boardroom and they're just like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. Final Fantasy Battle Royale. Do it. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. I just don't get it. A, I was like really excited when they copyrighted these because I thought maybe they'd be something good. Yeah, we like and, speculated maybe some backstory for for various things or First Soldier referencing maybe prequel type stuff with Sephiroth. That was not the case. Yeah, just Battle Royale. I mean, I've seen some people that are legitimately seem excited by it but i just don't understand how or why what'd you think tark uh i saw battle royale i was like well there's one final fantasy 7 game that i'm not playing i i seriously nope. can't get you guys nope. back i don't know what's going on right now i've even <laughs> tried adding in the the source again and it's just is not here let's remove both of these and add, Move the source and back in. Add, add add this back in. Let's see what we get. 
but yeah, um, I am not a fan of any battle royale. Uh, just whatever skin or theme you put on, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm not interested whatsoever. The other one, though, the other one I get a half a point on. How, how do you figure you get half a point? Because I said it was going to be before Crisis and Crisis Core with maybe like an expansion and re-release for modern times. So I get half a point. I didn't realize the full extent of whatever Crisis is. All right, we're going to pause the recording. All right, we're back. We're back. Streamlabs sucks. And then he walked to the beach, and it was just insane. I know, right? <laughs> right. Then he got it out of the refrigerator and said, this is where I store it. And I was like, I got to leave. Yeah. Um, just, just <laughs> anyway, you said you get, <laughs> now that we've got cameras back, thanks, Streamlabs. You said you get half a point for Ever Crisis. I, I don't. I don't see how you get half a point for Ever Crisis. All it really is is a 3D rendered background of Final Fantasy VII with supposedly some new episodic backfill type stories in there as well. Uh, by the way, this is going to be a single player mobile game. So while the battle royale is free to play, this one will not be. They'll probably do what they did with uh, 15 Pocket Edition, where they gave you the first chapter for free and then sold the rest at you know anywhere yeah. from 99 cents to 3.99, or you can buy all 10 chapters for 20 bucks type deal. Uh, so how do you feel you get half a point on this one? Because I think it's going to be like single player game of the entire timeline, like they say. Um, and I I thought again I was just going to be before Crisis Crisis Core maybe a little extra something uh to bring into modern times but looks like they're doing the entire timeline uh, my real question though is what are they going to do with their Cerebrus? because that was just awful so chronos while they're doing the final fantasy 7 remake they're going to do a final fantasy 7 remake yeah you don't like <laughs> spending money on final fantasy 7 remake Sorry. <laughs> you don't like that i hope you do because I don't know how many parts this thing's going to be. Yeah, I don't... I, like, and, and Mr. Happy and I were talking before the show via Twitter about it. It was like, in concept, I don't hate this idea. I'm kind I, of... I don't either. I actually like Tark, it. Tark, I'm with you on yeah. it. Like, I, you know, more story and stuff. But I'm literally getting a 7 remake at full AAA prices, episodically, that is still in development. <laughs> while you're going to give me a mobile remake of FF7... With some extra stuff, you know, like the remake, the AAA version does with some extra stuff, episodically, that I could pay for. Like, how much money do I have to give Square Enix before they realize I liked Final Fantasy VII? Can we please stop? Can we please stop? Yeah, I feel like this, like, if the remake had been, like, what this looked like and we just got, like, the full game straight up and this is, like, a Switch title, I'd be all about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that would, be, Switch. that would be amazing. Um. And then, you know, you would get, like, the other stuff that people don't have access to, like um, Crisis Core before Crisis. A lot of people have a hard time finding those. One's a mobile game that's, like, old, and the other's on PSP only. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that would be a good thing. And the, the issue is there's a lot of unknowns that I feel. A lot of people, like, see this at face value. They're like, oh, it's going to be a single-player RPG and installments, and we're going to get to play through all this story as a single. But you don't even know that. This could just well, be like... I'm going to read you exactly what the press release says, because okay. I had okay. a feeling, Good. you know, that was on everybody's Clarify. mind. I wish it did. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> in addition, this is after they've covered the intergrade stuff. In addition, today Square Enix announced two exciting new mobile games set in the Final Fantasy VII world. Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier is a battle royale action game set in Midgar before the events of Final Fantasy VII. As a soldier candidate, the player will make full use of their magic and abilities in a battle for survival. That's it. Final cool. Fantasy VII Ever Crisis is a chapter-structured single-player experience which will cover the whole of the Final Fantasy VII timeline including the events of the original game, along with all these Final Fantasy VII compilation titles, as well as new story elements penned by Final Fantasy VII remake story and scenario writer Kazushige Nojima, surrounding the origins of Soldier. More information on these two mobile games, Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier and Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, will be announced at a later date. 
Yeah, so we still don't know. Like that's yeah, that's the official press release. So uh, it... like it could just be like something like kind of on rails just to tell the story and you get a few battles here or there. I, I don't Maybe. know. I, I'm just I'm assuming the worst. I'm a pessimist. It's okay. Like I just I'm gonna assume it's not gonna be that good. But I mean I, I hated don't... the I hated the per chapter model that uh Pocket Edition did for Final Fantasy 15, so I really don't yeah. like it here either, Tarkov. But yeah. I really think, again, I'm not opposed to this as a project. I just don't understand how you have double remakes simultaneously, and I don't think this is going to be a stroke-for-stroke stroke remake at all. Like I, I'm more in Kronos's camp where this is going to be a story beats thing that is mildly interactive. If you've played Pocket Edition, that's basically what it is. There is some interaction and some battles there, but it's more filling in narrative gaps than than high, you know, strategy RPG depth of gameplay. It's just not that, and I don't think this is going to be either. And then you you still have the argument of resources on this one. Could we please just keep the team on the damn seven remake? And I know that for a large percentage of this, there's there's different teams involved. I get it. I do software engineering, but you just told me that this one's also written by the main scenario writer for Final Fantasy VII remake. So clearly, there is some overlap where they're pulling double duty, and it's hard. You know, it, they may have total time to be able to do it, and it's not imposing or taking away from anything. But that is a perception that people will walk away with, Tark, that people were pulled away, even if they weren't. People, We already have it with 14 and 16, right? This is taking hey, away from creative assembly. No, it's it's. it's this not is why away. we had that whole live letter about product man, uh, project management <laughs> right here. <laughs> Explain. We can do multiple things at once. I can't, I can't defend it. <laughs> I mean, you're 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 more positive about again. I'm lukewarm on this stuff. I just think I don't have a problem with them doing all of it. It doesn't mean I have to like all of it. I'm not going to play the battle royale, for instance, but I don't have yeah. a problem with them doing it. I do have a problem with the perception and maybe the reality of all of this happening at the same time and all of it feeling very cash grabby to me. Yeah, it does feel a little like that to me, and. I already defended getting a nickel and dimed three or four times for buying these. I, I can't really defend getting nickel and dimed to death on, on a double mobile games and new versions of remakes. Like well, we're really getting a new version of remake before remake two comes. I mean, that doesn't stop DLC and this, and I don't know. I think their thought process is because of the way they're telling the story and remake that. It, so, Okay. They kind of misled people before the first remake. I'll start there, right? Because they, they said it was a remake, and really it's a sequel, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and they told people you didn't need any prior knowledge, blah, 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 right? So, like, there are new players that played the remake that like it, because it is a good game. It's a really good game. Yeah. Um, and they might not know a lot of stuff. They might have been confused by stuff. I'm sure they went on YouTube, and they looked up stuff, and they looked up the... This might be their way to to tell all the other stuff that they want to try to include in part two and part three, if there is three parts of the remake. So maybe that's where they got the idea from. I just don't like it because it's the same for what you said, because it feels like we're doing another remake while another remake's going on. I, I don't know. Yeah. And there is that. perception that you do have to worry about. And this yeah. feels, even if it's not Tark, even if it's not taking resources from the project, the main project, yeah. There's going to be the perception that it is. There is going to be the perception that they're just slamming as much Final Fantasy VII shit out onto the market as they can to suck up as much money as they can. That may not be the intention. That, that Behind the scenes, they may feel like this definitely adds to the remake experience. We, we feel like we're doing it. But that's perception at some point does start to leak into reality. I mean, they got to make up for Marvel Avengers somehow, right? <laughs> Sing! True. True. that's how they're gonna get it you know what <laughs> hd team was down everyone likes, financially everyone likes Kevin. we're gonna Let's get it back it right there <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye on it we definitely want all of your opinions on it in the comments below on youtube and on readycheckradio.com now let's jump back to where we normally start the show in final fantasy 14 news uh, Ishikawa returning as the main scenario writer for Endwalker, if you don't know. 
Uh, they wrote the, they were the main writer for Shadowbringers. This one gets a huge thumbs up from me because I think yeah. story and narrative wise, Shadowbringers, maybe you didn't like the gameplay in certain regards, but Shadowbringers to me was the best narrative expansion we've had to date, Tark. I concur. It is the best. Uh, I know people will defend to have Heaven's Word. And it's not even defending. It's It was the best. Shadowbringers supplanted it. And now the person that helped write that is doing Endwalker, and I'm all for it, and I expect a thrilling conclusion to this saga. And it kind of makes sense, Kronos, right? I mean, if if you have... Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have Nisako uh, Ishikawa writing this close to the end, you got to let her finish. <laughs> or you got to let her finish it. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi P says, yes, she's cheerfully and perhaps somewhat frantically, as does happen, pouring her heart and soul into each line of dialogue for each and every character. Of course, she did not work alone in creating the main scenario for Shadowbringers as well. The story is born from the hard work of each member of the team contributing to make the best story possible. And Walker is following a similar flow. So please look forward to it. I think that uh, should make us feel relatively safe in where we're headed as far as it being a decent narrative. Yeah, I mean, it just made sense, right? She made us care about a lot of characters, even some that have existed mm -hmm. for a while. And if this is going to like wrap everything up, just let her do it. She did a really good job. And I, I think I'm excited that she's still involved, but I thought it was just like a easy move to make to just let her do it. Yeah. It's the most logical. It's like, Hey, that story you told, we need you to wrap it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just, we need the ending. Could you go ahead and get the team together and all start working on that? Uh, last week we had referenced a uh, Washington post article that we thought, at least I thought, and, and you two seem to agree with me that maybe there was some inferring uh, that shouldn't have taken place. We provided an update on that same show where Yoshi P kind of clarified saying, no, I didn't say the Xbox is totally out. What we didn't talk about in that interview. And I did want to bring back uh, for, for this week is that deep dungeon was also uh, brought up in that interval or in that interview. Uh, this one's with VG 24 uh, seven, both heaven's word and Stormblood had deep dungeons while Shadowbringers lacked a deep dungeon of its own. Instead, incorporating the leveling aspect of the concept into the Bosgen Southern front. Is there any chance we might see the return to the deep dungeon concept with Endwalker? And uh, Yoshi P says, when we announced that we wouldn't be including a deep dungeon in the 5.x series, we realized that there were more players that had been looking forward to it than we had expected. We're already preparing the concept and discussing about what to do for our next deep dungeon. So we will proceed with development once this plan fits in with our development milestones. However, since this is for some point in the patch 6.x series, please don't take it as guaranteed just yet. After all, we first need to get past the, the high hurdle of rounding off development on Endwalker with an aim of delivering the best story to our players. So it sounds like they want to. They're gathering ideas for, but we might not see another deep dungeon, Tark. Yeah, you might not. Um, I'm not a big deep dungeon person. person. I find it kind of boring. Um, but apparently the, a lot of people did like it. I hope they can bring that back um, for those people. I won't partake of it really, but. Are you a deep dungeon uh, like guy, Kronos? I like, I like Bozja. Uh, I've done them all. Um, I haven't soloed them. There, there is a fairly decent size like community that solos them. Um, because that content is pretty hard and difficult and it takes oh, a yeah. lot of time. Um, and so, you know, it kind of sucked for them because, like, you can't, like, Bosja, that's not it. For us, Bosja was a replacement because we're just there for the XP and the rewards, right? So Bosja's like, okay, yeah, it gives us rewards, it gives us XP, we're in there. But uh, for the people that wanted, like, that one, like, solo challenge, like, Bosja doesn't give you that other than maybe the yeah. 1v1s. Maybe, maybe that was, like, their idea there with the 1v1s. But those aren't even to the same degree, to be honest. Like, the 1v1s compared to soloing, like, the Palace right. of the Dead. And, and you have the comparable. random element of the 1v1s in, in right. Bosja as well. Can you actually get into it? Right, that's right. that's the real hard part. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, it seems to me like they're really trying. That's, I mean, I kind of get that, like, they're going to try really. Like, I think he doesn't want to promise it because he doesn't want another situation yep. like the ultimate on his hands mm, where a lot yeah. of people are mad. And so he wants to be, make clear that he's not, like, setting it in stone. But to me, it sounds like they're actively planning to put it in, like, 
probably the dot three patch or something like that. We'll have to see. Uh, on this topic, though, a lot of people do use that for leveling of alternate classes. And I know, mm -hmm. Kronos, you, you have every you know class maxed out, so you're not doing it actively right now. But are you guys deep dungeon grinders for those like, you know, for those first X levels to get to 50 and then to get to 60? Or, or are you dungeon runners? Are you, you know, leaves? Are you like, how do you grind those alternate classes after not only the MSQ is gone, but pretty much all of your side quests are gone after a class or two as well? What do you do? What do you do first, Tark? What's your preferred method of leveling? said leaves i had to actually remember what the heck that was <laughs> from all the god <laughs> don't do that <laughs> i forgot what that was uh so no not leaves uh no not deep dungeon uh, i prefer you dungeon. can tell neither and... of you two are into crafting or gathering if okay, you were like well it's good for that if we're, yeah. I, I know what we're talking <laughs> about the other stuff yeah 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 the specifically that. disciples of war and disciples of magic here yeah, yeah. um i prefer dungeon runs i feel that gives you the, the best experience to know what your job can do um and then doing all the roulettes uh all those bonuses um and then after i'm done with that then i move back to a main job to do whatever i need to do are you the same uh chronos it really depends on my goal right um like typically when i'm like on my fifth or sixth job at that point or whatever that i'm getting to max level i i usually just will spam dungeons because that's more fun to me uh but if it's like day one say for instance like when if i played Ray, red mage day one stormblood right i was going to be in, i would have been a deep dungeon trying to get there as fast as possible um so it really just depends on like the speed at which i want to go uh i prefer dungeons if i can get like decent fast queues and i can just do that because those are more interesting to me than doing the same 10 floors a deep dungeon 50 times yeah so here's here's the thing i do deep dungeon uh up until like 40 42 ish mm -hmm. then i start my my dungeon spam because i'll run dungeons all day and all night uh but i can't stand in that gap from like what 15 16 17 when you start doing copper bell mines and sestasha and and, and stuff like that and tamtara deepcroft yeah uh, up until like the beginning of 30s because you typically end up running one of two dungeons like, mm -hmm. I cannot tell you how many times I've run Tamtara Deepcroft <laughs> from, like, level 17 to level 28. And I'm just like, Mine no, I, I can't. So I would, rush, I would much rather go get those huge chunks of experience to burn those 20s into the early 30s, into the late 30s even. And then I start queuing up later in the, the uh, 2.x uh, dungeon series yeah, when there's yeah. a little more variety in the queue. <laughs> If I was doing pre fifty, I would I would hundred percent agree with you. I'd be just spamming pals of dead. I don't want to no. do any pre fifty dungeons. No. <laughs> um what else? More interviews, more interviews with trusted reviews. Uh Yoshi P talking to them about PlayStation 5. Again, I'm not gonna go through all the uh questions here, but there were, I thought, some uh some interesting ones, particularly talking about, hey. Uh, following the science of the seventh dawn, we've been with them for almost 10 years, kind of going to be emotional to see the story close. What can we expect? Uh, and how does the development team feel about saying goodbye? Uh, Yoshida says, first off, thank you so much for playing over these 10 years. I hope you'll continue uh, enjoying what's on offer. Now, when it comes to what sort of conclusion awaits the science of the seventh dawn and Endwalker, and whether there will be farewells to be made, I can't say anything just yet. Of course, even though we've decided every detail of how the story will finish, players will surely respond in different terms of what they've left feeling. I'm, I'll leave things unsaid for now because if we divulge how we personally feel, it'll influence the player's emotions unnecessarily. You'll have to experience the ending firsthand. Uh, so couldn't even like side door the question into them on like, how do they feel about saying goodbye? And they're like, oh, they really don't want to. And then the headline would be, we have to say goodbye to the Scions. <laughs> you know, they couldn't even backdoor the question. <laughs> Yoshi P is not going to fall for that trap, dude. No. <laughs> Although for for you, Adam, uh, they did ask. Uh, I, lo I love the questions in this interview. They, they did ask two or three ultimates across the expansion. And he's, I'd like to have two, but even that we're unable to provide a clear answer on right now. So I don't think you're getting the three you wanted for this one. I, time. I don't. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get three. Go ahead, Tark. Sorry. Nope, nope. I was just agreeing with you. 
Yeah, I, I, the three when I said it initially was pretty far fetched. Like, oh, I you, think yeah, just, you yeah. you put it out there as a pipe dream. Yeah, it, yeah. it would just I just think it would make people really happy. I I, I like what he said here because what he said here makes me feel like he's gonna try to do two, and that's really all I can ask. I you know you can't guarantee anything, um, other than the fact that we know we're gonna get one, and I'd be ecstatic if we get two, and I'd be over the moon if we get three, but it's probably not gonna happen. That's kind of where I'm at. Shadowbringers saw the introduction of two new races. Are there any plans in Endwalker to introduce anything new or even additional gender options for the Warrior of Light uh, and the introduction of armor which isn't locked to certain genders or races? Yoshi P says, that's another very direct question you have here. Probably why I like this interview. Uh, yeah. Regarding the addition of new playable races, I've explained previously, but the development cost is so monstrous that it's probably hard for players to imagine. As such, please understand there's no easy way to answer your question with a yes. As for the remaining elements that you'll find in Ed Walker, be sure to look out for announcements at the Fan Festival in May. Uh, reading between the lines, no new races. I don't think any of us expected new races in Ed Walker, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that that means no new races, but we might have some stuff on gear and uh, not being specific possibly at the fan festival stay tuned ps5 announcement was a lovely surprise great seeing it unveiled in such a fun way during the showcase we've heard it will support 4k uh and improve loading times but will it use the dual sense controller in some interesting ways in addition is there any news on the xbox version uh, again yoshi p taking the time to clarify previous statements that might have been inferred uh incorrectly uh, we are indeed incorporating detailed adjustments, so you'll be able to make use of the DualSense controller's functionality, such as when riding your mount and engaging in battles. It would be great to receive feedback once everyone gets started in the open beta. That is, of course, if you can get your hands on a PS5 console. Yoshi P seems to be more aware of the situation yeah. than the FF team, or the FF7 team. Yeah. Uh, now, when it comes to the Xbox version, there's unfortunately not much I can say presently, but just that we cannot work on all the steps simultaneously and uh, need to follow the order for proceeding with these things. Since we're currently involved in the development of Endwalker and preparing the PS5 version to follow on from the title service on PS4, it'd be appreciated if we can return to touch upon the Xbox version once things have settled. I, I'm, I'm thinking more and more, Kronos, that you're right. If we see Xbox, it'll be end of Endwalker as we head into the next expansion, if not after or with the next expansion itself. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, I, like I said, I feel like they would have already announced it by now. Because it's, it's something that you want to test too. Like they're doing this beta test for the PS5 version. And mm -hmm. I don't think you want to just willy nilly throw out the brand new expansion, launch it on Xbox without being sure that it's going to work because that's bad. Um, mm -hmm. So go ahead. And it's not just Xbox. It's Xbox One, Xbox One X, uh, Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X. You got to make sure all four work. Mm -hmm. And there's the trials for each four of those. There's uh, each expansion that you got to make sure everything works properly. Um, and you're going to throw on a new expansion on top of it. I, I can see why maybe when... 7.0 comes out and like, you know, we're not doing previous gen, you know, we're, we're cutting PS4 for crying out loud. Um, maybe they can make that room for Xbox, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think it's probably going to be sometime around the end of In Walker. Somewhere around there. Yoshi P also talked to PlayStation blog. <laughs> the man doesn't shut up. It's, it's it is the season for interviews. It is. It definitely is. And a lot of the questions, you know, we're skipping over because they're rehashes, you know, mm -hmm. people asking about the, oh, the end of end, the story is coming up. And, you know, he gives virtually the same answer. But where the questions differ, uh, what are some of the main themes you want fans to watch out for as they explore the new expansion and play through Endwalker's story? When the players finally reach the end of 6.0, what do you want them to feel? In 14, the story progresses without explicit boundaries defining good or evil, due in part to my own tastes and preferences in storytelling. History is typically defined by the winners, and in these cases, it is the loser who is consistently depicted as evil. However, each side had something that they stood for, and the definition of good and evil shifted depending on the times, people's values, education, and laws. I try to picture 
What would people believe despite such circumstances or how people find hope in the face of inevitable despair? Personally, I don't wish for players to feel a certain way as they play through the story. I say this because I believe people should have the free have freedom in that aspect. I hope our players enjoy Endwalker. I mean, good Lord, man. If you needed... A, it, hire him as a mouthpiece if you don't want him to be the director of your game, right? <laughs> He cares. I mean, talk cares about so an answer there, Kronos. Yeah, like like Tark said, he he cares a lot about the game. Like it, I don't know. The dude's basically a god. <laughs> I, don't <know laughs> I, I don't know about that, but like I mean, you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying like he's legit a god, but like hey, when I mean, someone asks if you're yeah. a god, you, you say, say yes, yes. <laughs> you say but yes. like I, I I just don't know if anybody else could do what he does. I I don't. It's crazy. We're going to the moon, Tark. So they mm-hmm. asked a lot of elements you've revealed from Endwalker are incredibly reminiscent of Final Fantasy IV. Mm-hmm. What themes from Final Fantasy IV have inspired you in Endwalker? Can fans expect more similarities? What nods to other mainline Final Fantasy games might fans find in Endwalker? Uh, and Yoshi P says the previous lunar satellite, Dalamud, turned into a cage created by the Allegan Empire to imprison Bahamut. That begs the question. Then what is the moon itself? Is it true we are it is true we are paying homage to Final Fantasy 4, but the main pillar of the story is undoubtedly Final Fantasy 14. Since we're concluding the Hydaelyn Zodiac saga, I would encourage you to keep an eye out for how it all ties together. I mean, he's literally causing you to question the moon that we're going to be playing on Dark. <laughs> He's he's leaving it open for all sorts of twists and turns, and and he's not going to reveal anything until Endwalker comes. And I'm just like, ah, no more, make it stop. I'm already nervous. I uh, also just want to point out that IGN did a huge reveal article on Final Fantasy TCG's Shadowbringer yeah. starter set, which came out it last Friday. It made you giddy, didn't it? I love seeing it on TCG. <laughs> Indie made it to a live show that isn't. Isn't snowbound. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go back now to some non Final Fantasy 14 news. So we did seven, we did 14. And I think, you know what? A lot of this stuff, you know, okay, sure, right? The Nintendo Direct, either of you have anything on that? Most of it for Square Enix was announcements we've already talked about yeah. uh, as far as like Saga Frontier and uh, getting its thing and. Uh, Legend of Mana remaster announced for the Nintendo Switch, and I, I'm very happy, but no real bit. Bravely Default 2's final trailer came out. I think that was the biggest one for me. That comes out tomorrow, right? Uh, uh, yes. The 26th, so get ready for that. Um, Outriders, demo starts today. Chat, make sure you hang on after the show. The three of us are going to go live. I know some others in Ready Check Radio Stable are going to join us in chat uh, vocally, so you'll hear them on Discord too. We might have a couple different parties going, but my party, when you can party, because we got to play through a little bit and pick a class, then we can multiplayer up. So uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy has plenty of characters like Daddy Denathrius. Yes. <laughs> uh, absolutely, Indy. Absolutely. Um, so that demo starts today. We're not going to talk too much about it on the show here. If you're watching this show on YouTube, should come over to Twitch. Uh, join us live sometime. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to cut straight to the last one of this because I feel like if we did skip this, the other stuff I had in here was just like fun stuff we can do on next show, right? You know, talking about favorite summons and stuff. I, I don't think you guys mind pushing fluff. that stuff to next week. They were fluff until the, you know, the, the damn state of play happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll move those to next week. But I do feel like we should talk about uh, Near Replicants, uh, new opening cinematic. Kronos, from your socials, you were all over this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, like I said, I've said this, I think, every time we showed a new trailer on here. I, I've already been sold. Just give me the game. I don't, yeah. Just give me the damn game. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so good. Uh, I'm ready for it. So it looks good. There we go. Now I got it showing there. I had to get out all the summon B-roll I had for that discussion. Yeah. And then the music, man. The music of that game is so good. Yeah, obviously we're not playing the music here because I like having a Twitch channel. Right, uh, right. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so go, yeah. 
you want to listen to it, listen to it all your own time. But it, the soundtrack for that game is phenomenal. We're not have that far of... away from this one. Yeah. Nope. Have, have you started playing Atomata yet, Dark? I gotta get through eleven. I got two more orbs to get in eleven. And yeah, he's I... getting close to the end of Dragon Quest Eleven. Okay. I feel like maybe maybe you should take a break. And. and just, and... And play some automata. That definitely finish DQ eleven. But I will I, warn you, automata is hard to put down. If, yeah. if you're really into the story, it's hard to put down. Yeah, but. and you're gonna you're gonna run out of time <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> Although this one, I mean, you don't have to play automata to to get this one, uh, but it, it would be kind of nice. Yeah, I <laughs> I just I get like this shit eating grin on my face when I see these pink orbs flying by. That's just like oh, such yeah. a near thing. Uh, it's fantastic. I might actually play Automata on stream next week. You should. I, I might know. have to replay it soon. Yeah, it's it's been a while, so I could probably get away with like not knowing where everything is in my head and stuff like that. But such a great game, such a great game, and this this trailer right? is phenomenal, Tark. What do you think? Oh, it looks amazing, and all I every time I see it, I'm like, oh, Yoko Taro's are in the game. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of the other way around, but that's fine. Oh. Yeah, that's why it's funny. <laughs> it's funny on one level for Chris. It's funny on two levels for Adam and I. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's head over to Love It or Leave It. This is the way we wrap up the Relic Grind here. It's where we give you one thing, anything Square Enix related. Could be a game, a press announcement, a financial announcement, a feature in a game, something in Final Fantasy XIV. And all three of our hosts tell you whether they love it, want more of it, or they could do without it. So go ahead and leave it. Love it or leave it. You let us know your thoughts on today's item in the comments below on YouTube or over on readycheckradio.com, R-A-I-D. EO.com. We talked about it earlier, gentlemen, so I figure I'll ask you, love it or leave it, 100%. There is no middle ground here. Deep Dungeons in Final Fantasy XIV. We'll start with you, Kronos. Uh, yeah, so when it comes to like content in fourteen, uh, typically anything that seems like kind of fun, even if it's only just for one time, I'm a big fan of, and, and that is the same for Deep Dungeons. Also, they typically add mounts, so I'm usually about that, too. Um, so yeah, for me, it's a love it. I, I, it's just extra content to do. Um, it's something fun. It's a different way to level up. And there's challenges that certain communities like to partake in. So I, I love that it exists in the game. So I'm love it. I'm going to go with you and do love it. It's not something that I'm going to do over and over and over again. I don't really have any interest in trying to do it. The solo, uh, high challenge stuff. I like challenge, but I also like four, four person dungeons and eight person challenges more than I like the solo content challenges occasionally I might get in there with the red mage and take a stab at it, but I'm not going to sit there and grind it and grind it and grind it till I get it. Uh, I do get bored by them quite easily for the same reasons I get bored by Torghast in, in world of Warcraft right now. I don't think they're generally all that the most interesting content to do, but I've got to say, love it. I do like having it there as an option, yet another option for leveling in a game that, encourages you to level class after class after class so you gotta i think you gotta love that even if it's not the option i would choose i love that it is an option tarkov three for three i love it as well it's not my cup of tea but people do love it and more options in the game more reasons for people to keep playing hopefully it brings more people in more content is good well gentlemen I think it's time to play some Outriders. Chat, we're going to we'll, we'll do our little post show, spend a couple of minutes with you, then we'll have the channel go dark for like 10 seconds just so I can relabel things and have the Torghast is painfully fun. You out of your mind, Indy. Uh Borghast. Um <laughs> So, we'll have the channel go dark just so I can relabel things and the VOD separate down below. But then we're going to play the Outriders demo. Now all three of us, right? Did we all hold our words? Nobody played any all I did like was went... launch it and make a character. I made That's a all character. I did too. Tark? I just made a character. He's ready to go. All right. All three of us launched it, made a character, and then pff, peaced out. I, I stayed away from all videos, all tweets, like everything. So we're going to go in completely new on this one. Uh, and if you're listening on Spotify or watching on YouTube, we do stuff like this after the show 
each and every time. So come on by twitch.tv ready check radio until next Thursday though. Kronos, where can everybody find you? My friend, uh, same as always. Yeah. Twitter below, uh, down there. Uh, you can listen to me complain there before I complain on the show. <laughs> Dark off. Oh my God. I love you Kronos, but <laughs> just so much salt. Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at dark off gaming. Uh, also on Excalibur and Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, also, Ready Check Radio on Saturday nights, playing Dragon Quest XI. Maybe we take a break and do Nier Automata. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally right there on Twitter at Magic Man. But more importantly, follow at RC Radio so you get tweets about all the latest shows, streamers, and everything else that our volunteers, thank you to all of them, have going on. Until next time, gang, stay safe. And we'll see you on the servers. Later. Later.